Hello and thanks for joining School of the American Rifle. Today we're going to do a video about doing a visual inspection of components. You don't need to have gauges for this type of thing. Sometimes it's better if you have two examples so you can compare maybe something new that you purchased to something that has been proven out. So first example, I'm going to show you an upper receiver, and these all have black tags on them to indicate that these are examples we use in the class to look for visual cues of problems. So the first thing, we're going to put this light inside the upper receiver so we can take a good look at the feed ramps. So on these ramps, they weren't cut through all the way. Let me put this on the bench. They weren't cut through all the way, so if you come up here and go up, there's like a shelf. They didn't completely mill the M4 ramps all the way. So I know what some people watching would say, well just take a file or a Dremel tool and cut them. You could do that, but you don't want to when it comes to the ramps on your upper because the anodizing is where a lot of the hardness and wearability is built into the receiver. So if you grind these, if the projectiles coming out of the magazine come up these ramps if they're ground they can wear forward and actually cause feeding problems in the future it all depends on the use but these ramps are not cut right so we keep this upper receiver in this condition because it's a reject we could have sent it back to the manufacturer but we didn't because it's better for us to have as a visual check for students to see hey not everything's perfect so that's one example Another thing you can do is take the bolt carry you intend to use and just make sure that it moves freely in the upper receiver. Make sure the cam pin's installed and just make sure, and you should put your charging handle into it, but just make sure that the bolt carrier moves freely. Sometimes you'll run into upper receivers where depending on the tool they use, they might be crushed right in this area here and the bolt carrier will bind up when it's about three quarters of the way full forward when these rails make contact inside the upper receiver where the tight spot is. So again, just using no gauges, you can just take the bolt carrier and just make sure that it moves freely in there. If you have the gas tube in there, that's a whole different check because you have to ensure that the gas tube lines up with the carrier key or gas key. But that's one upper out of the way. Another pair of uppers we have here, these are not anodized. They're still in the raw because the manufacturer detected issues before they got anodized. But let's say you did purchase something like this. If you look at the back of the receiver, you can see how this wall here is a lot wider than this wall here. And sometimes there's a little bit of an optical trick that happens here because there's a ramped edge here that the charging handle latch engages. But this is pretty off-centered. Sometimes you can see the main bore here is off to one side. It's pretty hard to detect with the naked eye here, but here's where it really stands out. Let's flip this around. Look at the gas tube hole. Look how off-center it is. So, thinner here than it is over here. This upper receiver will still allow the gun to work. But what will happen is, is because the bolt carry and everything isn't timed or clocked properly, the barrel that goes in this will need more gas than one that goes onto an upper receiver that's built properly. So all things being equal, let's say the barrel on this one had an 070 gas port. On a properly built upper it might cycle Put this upper on there and it might not cycle until you open the gas port up to a higher number. I'm not going to throw a number out there because then people are going to hold me to that. So, But you would need more gas for this to cycle because things are misaligned. This one's also off. See? Thinner here than it is over here. Sometimes you can detect problems if you look at the threads. You'll see that the threads have a nice point on one side. And then they sort of have a flat spot on another, indicating that the bore was cut off center. These were donated by the manufacturer. Here's another thing you can check for. This is a brand new upper. And if we look inside the upper receiver, you can see from the forging process and the subsequent machining process that there are cracks. Now this isn't going to cause the upper receiver to explode. The upper receiver really doesn't hold a lot of pressure. But it's something you shouldn't see on the upper. 
Some might even say, well, if you put a rear sight on there and it clamps, it might hold everything together and it won't crack anymore. Maybe, but it's still something you don't want to see. So just look for things like cracks. Let's look for things that look off-centered. Now let's look at this one from the back. Can you see that this wall does look a little thinner than this wall? But the other example that was in the white was definitely much worse than this. Let's do a comparison. And it can be hard to see because we have two different colors going on here. But like I said, if you look at the front, pretty obvious. One centered, one's not. So, as always, remember, these are examples of one, 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 and one. Hope you find this video educational. Thanks for watching.